Hey everybody and a very, very good evening to you all. Uh, this is Declan Donahue here and for those of you who don't know me, um, I'm really happy to be with you tonight. We're you're probably watching on my Facebook page or on YouTube or on one of the two groups that I'm sharing this video into. So one of the groups is called the Thoughts Become Things Community. A lot of people find their way to this group from maybe something I've done on TikTok or on Instagram. So if you're watching for the very, very first time, um, please comment and tell us uh, where, you're, where you are, where you're from um, and what brought you to our group and just really, really want to welcome you here. Um, so I run a, um, a company, Declan O'Donoghue Consulting. We really help uh, a lot of people from wherever they are to wherever they want to get to, really with mindset on a very, very high level. So we help people to change their paradigm. Uh, the paradigm would be something you would consider your thoughts and your feelings and actions. Um, they, get you the, they get you the results. But a paradigm is like, you know, if you go back to when you were 12, 13, 14, you probably had ambitions of being a driver one day, a driver of a vehicle. Um, and then you have to learn it, right? So before you actually learned it and you would classify yourself as a driver who's got a license now and you know how to propel a vehicle using your hands and your feet and these pedals and a steering wheel, you're a driver. This is part of your paradigm now and you rarely forget it. Even if you haven't driven for years, you can hop into a car, even if it's a left-hand drive or a right-hand drive. It's part of your paradigm now. So you might be somebody who... It's part of your paradigm that you're somebody who smokes cigarettes or drinks alcohol and you want to leave that behind. Well, you'll go through a process and you'll change your habits. You'll give up things that are not serving you anymore and you'll start taking on newer habits. And now you would say, like, I used to smoke from when I was 13 till I was 20. But if you ask me, do I smoke? I'd say, no, it's like I just don't identify anymore. It's part of my paradigm is to be a non-smoker. And for about eight years, it was to be a smoker. So we help people change their paradigm. And when that happens, the results really change in a, in a, in a very dramatic way. Um, just came off a call for 90 minutes there with uh, probably an, an hour and a three quarters actually with uh, the group. And I was looking at a screen of 35 people at the moment. And I know one lady was sitting in her new office uh, of a building that's gone four, you know, it's going to help her to do four times what she used to do in her business before with a little bit of adjustment, a few conversations, but a massive adjustment up here in, in the mind. Another lady um, has a big, big success story that we can't disclose until Thursday morning. There's lots of things like that going on with this group of people. They're very confident. They're very uh, driven and very focused. But go back maybe six months, maybe about seven months, uh, maybe only two or three weeks for some of them. And they were very scared and they were very unsure. And they were on the sidelines looking in um, at the Thoughts Become Things community and saying, yeah, I want I want those results. I want to be like those people in the academy. And they, they move from this group, the um, Thoughts Become Things group, into the academy group where we really dig in. So we call it the academy because it's a place of learning. It's a constant thing. And whether you like it or not, 70,000 thoughts are going through your, your mind every day. And the way that you take that endless power and adjust it and direct it is what's getting you your results. And knowingly or unknowingly, you're directing that that very transformational power into non-productive thoughts, pessimistic thoughts, fear-based thoughts, and they're only going to bring back to you results that you don't want. So why everyone's so confident and happy and chirpy and hard, you know, driven is because they now can feel every single day that they are directing that energy, that thought energy that's it's just happening all the time. And they're they're directing that towards um, means and towards outcomes that they want. And there is a law of cause and effect and the effects and the results that people are getting is never something to look at and be jealous of or, or, or be suspicious about. People get the results by the law of cause and effect. And the, the cause is their thinking and their actions are in the right way and the effects are the results, okay? So that's that's really an introduction as to who we are and why you might be watching this video right now. Uh, and what I wanna to share tonight, um, one of the modules we do is, is really heavily around leadership and whether the people we're working with are um, leaders at all of any organization, it doesn't matter because you, you've got to be leading yourself um, with your with your mindset. You've got to be leading yourself if you're taking care of your dietary habits. You've got to be leading yourself when you're taking care of uh, your exercise uh, regimen or you've got to be a leader when it comes to your finances. You've got to be a leader. Let's say you're in a relationship and oh, she's like this or he's like that or whatever it may be for you. Um, well, how are you in that relationship? You've got to be a leader in your own relationship as well. If you've got kids, you've got to be a really good leader of, of them because when they're going through their little life, they need direction, they need focus, and you kind of need to be at your best a lot of the time. And I know as a dad of three kids under the age of 10, that's not always so easy. Uh, but leaders don't complain, they don't mope, they don't blame, they just get on with it. So um, in this article, 
by Thomas Troward. He's a, it's a very advanced level article, but I just want to read it tonight. Um, so stay with us if you want, and, and I hope you enjoy it. Um, Troward is just a, re a really amazing student of um, thoughts becoming things type of mindset and philosophy. But he understands that a person really needs to understand themselves if they're going to get the best out of life. Your vulnerabilities, your frailties, your strengths, your confidence, um, forgiving yourself for mistakes you might have made in the past, going into every day with a clean slate. So I'm going to read this, and some of it, the language might even mightn't even mean anything to you. It might go over your head. It certainly goes over mine from time to time, but I'm just going to go with it anyway. I remember reading this one time in an airport in Michigan. I read it on my phone. Uh, I'd been reading it in the airport that morning, and I read it, and one lady contacted me. She ended up working with me for, for the best part of a year. But she was crying listening to it. She said, you, you just you read something and it just spoke to my soul. And it really um, it really made a big impact on her. So who knows? Maybe it'll have the same impact on you tonight. So let's get into this. Um, Thomas Troward, yourself. I want to talk to you about the livingness that there is in being yourself. It has the least it has at least the merit of simplicity, for it must surely be easier to be yourself than to be something else. Hang on. Uh, I just lost you guys for a minute. Yeah, there we are. Um, it, it has at least the merit of simplicity because it must be surely easier to be oneself than to be something or somebody else. Yet that's what so many people are constantly trying to do. The self that is their own is not good enough for them. So they're always trying to go one better than what God has made them with endless strain and struggle as the consequence. Of course, they are right to put before them an idea that is infinitely grander than anything that they have yet attained. And that's what you guys are probably here for in the Thoughts Become Things community or um, some of the people who follow me on YouTube where I'm sharing this video as well. Um, that's why the people in the academy, that I'm, I'm, I'm streaming this into the academy group as well. That's why you're here because, you know, of course, you're right to be putting something in front of you that that is grander than you've ever uh, infinitely grand, grander than anything you've ever attained before but the only possible way of progress is by following an idea that is always a stage ahead of ourselves but the mistake is in not seeing that its attainment is a matter of growth and the growth must be an expansion of something that already exists within us so what Robert is saying here is you know, yes, have a big goal in front of you, but you got to understand that chasing these goals is is, is a, it's a road to ruin. Don't chase the goal. Have the goal in front of you, but look at developing yourself. And that's how you want to attain that goal. Often people arrive at their goal and people say, well, how does it feel? How does it feel? And they rarely are talking about like that um, in our call tonight in the three, an hour and three quarters with the team. The lady from New Zealand, the, the Prime Minister of New Zealand, and the uh, Rachel, the, the jockey who, uh, isn't it Blackmore, the lady who um, just rode to success uh, in the Grand National recently. You know, they'll have the Grand National and they'll have the success, but they look back at, it's not just the getting over the finishing line, or it's the people that they became along the way, the challenges that they met, the, the criticisms, the, obje the ob objections, and the, the uh, we all face that. Like, everyone in the academy has that heaviness in their life in their circle of friends, in their own family. It might be the person they share the bed with every night who is their biggest critic and their biggest doubter. That that can be the case. It might be your case. But the growth you're going to go through is the real win in when you achieve your goals. That's like going over this for years when I look back at the list of clients I've worked with and I see their results. I'm friends with nearly all of them at this stage and you see their results and I'm still observing them. The change is constant and it's progressive. They're constantly developing because they know a new way now. There's no kind of I wonder what I'll do next month. They're on it. They're living life. And the first line of this article is, I want to talk to you about the livingness that there is in being yourself. So a lot of people let go of the crap that they were putting up with that was in front of them. And instead, they're being their true self in the way to attain their goals. This growth is a continuous process. And we cannot do next month's growth without first doing this month's. But we are always wanting to jump into some ideal of the future, not seeing that we can only reach it by steadily going on from where we are right now. And that's 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 one of the truest lines I can tell you from my own experience. These considerations should make us more confident and more comfortable. We are employing a force which is much greater than we believe ourselves to be, yet it is not separate from us and needing to be persuaded or compelled or unveiled to do what we want. 
It's the substratum of our own being, which is constantly passing itself up into manifestation. I mean, that's that's a whole industry of personal development that so many people miss. You know, they're looking at logos and brands and and gizmos and gadgets, and they're missing. Like I love, we really work with like the true foundations of of results, which is in the individual development of the mindset of the individual. Let's read that again. People like you, whether you know it or not, you're employing a force all of the time that is much greater than you could even possibly imagine. And you're doing it with every thought. Like I, I said to one of my team today, I sent him a voice note and I said, I want you to read back to me what you just read, what you just wrote. Read it back and stop for 30 se for 10 seconds. Read it and stop. It's like, this is what I'm going to do. Stop and just feel that, okay, like you try it. Right now, you, the person watching this video, you try it. Just say to yourself, I'm going to earn, like earn twice what you're currently earning. Let's say you're earning four grand a month. Just close your eyes and go, I'm going to earn double my salary. And stop for a second and you'll hear, bullshit. You, you'll, you'll even feel it in your body. It's like, ugh, you can't do that. It's like a tension in, up here sometimes. Like, who is that or what is that? Well, that's the paradigm. It's a really powerful thing. It'll help you to stay very careful when you're climbing a ladder. Or it'll be very quick to say, uh, easy up there, buddy, if you're near a cliff edge, taking one of those Insta, Insta pictures, right? Just, are you sure you want to get that killer selfie? Because it could end up being a killer selfie. Like, be careful. The paradigm is there to keep us on the straight and narrow and keep us safe. But if you're not in control of your thoughts, it's like the tail wagging the dog. It's wagging you. It's it's absolutely keeping you stuck. So we're employing a force that is so much greater than we even understand it to be. And it's far greater than the, the meat and bone structure that we are. I can tell you that. But it's not separate from us. It's not something we can switch off. You're constantly doing it through right and wrong thinking. Um, he goes on to say, it's not something you have to compel or you have to twist or, or or you have to unveil it to do what you want. It's the substratum of our own being. So there was a, an Oasis album years ago called Be There Now or Be Here Now or something like that. You got to be it. That's why people say affirmations. I am so happy and grateful that I am this now. So you're telling your inner being, your, your, your soul, your spirit, your energy, whatever, to be what you want to be now. And you command of yourself, that's who I am now. And that little inner critic goes, no, you're not. But you got to switch that off and say, no, 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 I am. And that's why, as I said, if we could just transplant all of you guys into the academy to see those 35 smiling faces, we just we just went out into these breakout rooms and everyone, everyone was listening and buzzing because they're living the livingness of life because they're being themselves. This article is called Yourself, okay? So you're compelling a force through being it now. Yes, you, you can look all around you and see, yeah, but I'm not there. Like, I want to have a really nice boat. Out the boat. It's not there. But that's okay. I'm working on myself. The boat will show up. I don't want to be, I got to, I got to, you know, do all this stuff to get the boat. No, no, no. You, you got to be that person now. Um, anyway, we'll move on. But in truth, the outer self is only surface growth of that individuality which lies concealed far down in the depths below and which is none other than the spirit of life, which underlies all forms of manifestation, right? In and um, endeavor to realize what this spiritual essence must be in itself. That is to say, apart from any of the conditions that arise from the various relations with which necessarily can establish themselves in all its various forms, it is homogenous self. It's in, I'm sorry, in its homogenous self, what else can it be but just pure essence of life? If you like, if you like, so to call it. So that spiritual essence that's in us, the, those butterflies we get when we think of something that we truly desire, that's the livingness of life inside of us, trying to compel us to go and get the thing. Okay, just take your meat and bone structure up and get it out there. Go, go tell that person you love them. Go take them out for a, a walk or a drink, as it will be in a few weeks, God willing, that you can meet someone on a date or whatever. You know, go and tell that person you want to raise. Uh, go and tell that person you're leaving to open up your own premises. That's th That inner critic can also be your greatest inner drive if you only tap into it. Um, the real, um, sorry, let's see, he says, um, then realize that the essence of life, it exists in the innermost of every single person, of 
of its forms of manifestation in as perfect simplicity as any we can attribute to it in our most abstract conceptions. In this light, we see it to be the eternally self-generating power which expresses it and flows into form. So I would say, and I've said it on a lot of my calls before, a lot of my master classes, like my house is bricks and mortar and labor and paint and timber and mortgage and all that stuff. But it's more than that for me. This is a living, breathing manifestation of thought energy. I got an idea. I talked to my wife about it. We both generated this idea. We, we didn't have the means. We didn't, we didn't have the qualification for a mortgage. So we transmuted the ideas into more business for, for myself, more income for my wife. We started thinking about it. And we started conversing with builders and with planners and with an architect. And we started. So we were transmuting thought energy into physical reality. We talked to the bank. They said, you're going to need three years of books. I was like, yeah, I don't want to wait three years. We started talking to brokers. We started, and eventually we, we got it happening. So in this light, the house, which was a goal once upon a time, was something I would write down and affirm and hope and dream and pray and wish. But it's now in a totally different manifestation. It was a, an idea once. Now it's a real thing. So in this light, we see the eternally self-generating power, which to express itself, it flows into form. Um, one point in November, during the time we were building the house, Storm Callum came to Ireland and blew the central section down. So that was an expression of either a problem or an opportunity. And it was a real opportunity. I looked at it and I was surrounded by people like, it's a big problem. And I goes, no, it's an opportunity for me to, to show that I can make this even work in any, for anything. And I still do that. This universal essence of life is a continual becoming and since we are part of nature we do not need to go further than ourselves to find it the life-giving energy at work all of the time with all of its powers you can see it everywhere all of the time especially now all of these bare branches that we've been looking at for the last few months you're driving along now and you're like oh look at all those blossoms look at all those blooms look at all those buds look at the way the mountain like i, I live in valencia and i look across at port mcgee it's getting greener every morning because the the, the fenjuk or the, the white grass is is being overtaken by the new green grass. Um, Life-giving energy, it's always at work with all of its powers. Hence, all we have to do is to allow it to rise to the surface within us as well. And a lot of people are not allowing it to rise because they're too busy. When you're not busy, what are you doing? You're doing this new activity that a human being never did. For you Go back for millions of years, we did not do this. And now we're doing it all the time. So how can we allow, allow the risingness of energy to come up on us when we're busy, when we're overwhelmed, when we're stretched? You'll always be busy and overwhelmed and stretched. You'll never have enough time. You'll never have enough money unless you make a decision that this life-giving power that's always working, if we let it, the trees let it, the oceans let it, the grass lets it, but we we have to control it or else it's just, we're like a cork on the ocean being blown around all the time. Hence, all we have to do is allow it to rise to the surface within us. We do not have to make it rise any more than the engineer who sinks a bore pipe down into an artesian well, they have to make the water rise in it. No, they don't. The water does it by its own energy. It springs to, up into a fountain and it can rise 100 feet into the air. Just so shall we find a fountain of the essence of life ready to spring up in ourselves. And it always is. It always is. It's inexhaustible and it's continual. And this increases its flow all of the time. As one thought long ago to a woman at a wayside, well, that was a different thing. Okay, so this upspringing of life essence is not just somebody else's, it's yours. It's in you, the viewer watching this, not the other 20 people on the call. This is me talking directly to you. This upspringing of life essence is not just for somebody else or as Will Smith said on, on um, an interview one time, this is not some some esoteric uh, energy that is only for the few among us. It's in everyone all of the time. Um, it does not require deep studies, although I would argue that the deep studies that we do with people helps them to bring that, to believe in it, to see it, to bring it to the surface. Thomas Troward says it does not require deep studies, hard labors, weary journeyings to attain it. It's not in the monopoly of this teacher or that writer or those lecturers that we must uh, um, listen to or those books that we must read. It is, in fact, the innermost of ourselves. It is this little common sense thought as to how anything comes to being. This will soon eventually convince us that this great inexhaustible life must be the very root of the substance that's in all of us. 
Well, people kind of go, nah, I don't know, it's a bit out there, Declan. I always give an example of this, right? You know, about once a year, I, I, shave, I shave my hair and it, it grows back. Which way should I do it? This way. It grows back, okay? Same with you. You trim your nails or cut your, which way is my hair? That you trim your nails or cut your, your hair, it grows back. Where does it come from? We don't have like, like, where is it coming from? Okay, we eat fruits and vegetables and meat and everything and we get calcium and magnesium and yeah, nails are made from that. Fair enough. But where is it growing from? Like, you know, everything, it's it's incredible when you think about it. So there is constantly, um, where is the energy that if something's blowing into your eyes, you blink before you even know it's about to hit you? Like there's an energy that's beating your heart all the time. When you're asleep, um, you're awake for, you know, we're 24 hours in a day. Most of us sleep five, six, seven hours of that, maybe more. Your heart's always beating. You're not looking in saying, beat, come on, beat again, beat again. You're not telling your diaphragm to breathe. There's an there's an essence and a livingness that's keeping your life going. And a lot of people are just, you know, so busy to even think about that for 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 a millisecond. They might go for when when people come for acupuncture to me, I would talk to them about the chi or the essence, because like I might put a needle here if they had frozen shoulder there, and then they'd be like, they'd be looking this way and they'd be looking that way, and then I'd pop a needle in their wrist and then they'd go. How in the f did you do that? Right. And I'd explain there's a, a channel of energy that goes right up through the neck and it goes up into the head. And I'd say, do you ever get beeping in the ears or dizziness from time to time? Like, yeah, how did you know that? I'd say, do you ever sometimes, you know, feel like you're like really, really bursting for the pee and like you have to go? I say, yeah, how did you know that? So it's all connected. And the livingness and the energy that's within you is the same thing that wrote all those books that created this house. Uh, I didn't write those, by the way. There's books I read that gave you this laptop, this smart phone for millions of years the iphone was in the earth everything we needed the plastics that make it came from some petroleum product um the battery came from some uranium or some i don't know what they use in batteries but everything we've needed the internet's always been here flat screen hd ultra hd 4k televisions have always been here go back to the 1800s and napoleon and all these people were gallivanting around europe the internet was here the Concord has come and gone. It was here. Everything that we've needed is here and was here. And human beings just like you have brought it to reality. Yet, knowing this, liking personal development, I watch that stuff on YouTube. I'm into what you teach, Declan. I'm, I'm into that. I hear this all the time. Everywhere I go, I'm into that stuff. What about the livingness of life? What's in you? Not the stuff on the books and the shelves. Not the stuff that you like to listen to. Stop all of that and, and get a blank sheet of paper and look at it and say, what is in me? What's the Steve Jobs of me? What's the Mother Teresa of me? What's the, the Abraham Lincoln of me? Um, the, the lady, who, isn't it Rachel Blackmore? Is that her name? The, the jockey? She, why are you any different to her? Okay. So what's in you right now that is an upspringing of life essence that is trying to, to, to come to the surface? So many people have dreams and, and all that, and then they go, no, but I'm too busy doing this. Everyone's busy, but you just got to redirect that energy to get what you want. You got to want it. Okay, so the last line I'm going to say here today is this. Surely to be this vast infinitude of living power must be enough to satisfy all of our desires. And yet this wonderful idea is nothing but what we already are. It is all there in us now in you now only awaiting your recognition for its manifestation it is not the essence of life which has to grow for that is eternally perfect already in itself but it is our recognition of that that has to grow and this growth cannot be forced it must come by a natural process of allowing allowing it to come to the surface for more than yeah, I used to think about that. I, I remember I met a fellow one time and he was so frustrated because he believed that he'd invented rubber molds for making concrete flower pots. He was he got an idea and he never did anything with it. And now everyone's doing it. You know, you you everywhere you go, there's garden centers with George and flower pots and they had a rubber mold and they pull off the rubber mold and they leave behind the concrete pot. And he's like, I had that idea. I met another fellow one time and he said that um he had a, they had a daughter, and then after a couple of years, they had a son. And then the daughter was too big for the buggy, so they'd push the son in the buggy. And then the daughter was like on their shoulders, whatever. And he and then they were like, we should get her a skateboard and pull her along. And then he thought, I'll cut the skateboard in half, and I'll, I'll glue it to the back of the thing, and she could stand on the skateboard. And then Dragon's Den came on, 
And that idea was on Dragon's and it was the award-winning idea of Dragon's Den the first year, and the man became a multimillionaire. That idea sprung up inside of this person that I know, and they didn't do anything with it, but it came to them. I've got ideas. I always talk about a story. I was having a pint of Heineken in the Bishop's Town Bar with a friend Damien here and a friend John there, and an idea came to me. Nobody in the world has done that idea since, but I, I still have it, and I'm going to do it. And that was in 2002. It's nearly 20 years ago that I had that idea. And that idea is mine, mine alone, and it will come to fruition one day. But that's just it. Like, I've brought other ideas to the surface, and I'm, I'm not ready yet to bring that idea, but I will. So ideas are coming to all of us. Some people think they're not visionaries. They can't think. Absolutely, you can. But I was sitting on webinars and videos and all that, longing and looking and wishing and wanting. And I wouldn't recognize myself now being able to talk with this kind of confidence about this type of information. But the reason I can is because I started to listen to that desire. Desire, it said, is the unexpressed possibility within us seeking expression outside of us through our actions. And I take it one step further. I believe that frustration is our inner desire trying to get out of us and we're blocking it all the time. We're blocking it, nobody, we're blocking it and then we're blaming others for blocking it. We're stopping ourselves. We're coming up with excuses and reasons we can't. And you can't do that to yourself anymore because it's frustrating. I know you I know you feel that too. So last of all, it must come by a natural process, the first necessity of which is to abstain from all straining after being something which at the present time cannot naturally be. The law of our evolution has put us in possession of certain powers and opportunities and our further development depends on our doing just what these powers and opportunities make it possible for us to do here and now. And I would say your best friend after li after listening to this and kind of saying, yeah, but how Declan is get a blank sheet of paper and write down at the top, what do I want? You put a line down the middle and say home life, work life. What do I want? Home life, work life and make a shopping list. And I, I would even ask you to put in the comment section, how many, when did you last do that? When did you last do that? Like I, I could stand in seminars 40 or 50 or 60 people in Cork, Galway, Dublin, wherever. And I'll say, good evening, everyone. I have a question. What do you want? And they're like, no, I got pulled along here tonight. My friend had a ticket. You know, it's like, no, what do you want from life? Like, oh, I don't know. And they'll say it at the end. People will queue up at the end. They're like, I never, I've never thought of that question. I never asked myself, what do I want? I just, I just, you know, I went to college and then I got married and then I did this and then I got kids and, I haven't asked myself that ever in the longest time. So I am asking you to do that tonight. Get an A4 sheet of paper out of your printer. What do I want for my home life, my personal life, and my work life? Like two columns. The life outside of work and the life in work. Just write down a shopping list. Um, see my sister and her kids in Australia. Um, start my own business. Double my salary. Even, an, even at a 1000 a month, my bottom line every month. Um, make friends with the person that I've got a grudge with. Swim, swim. I want to swim. I want to learn how to swim. Write down your list of wants. The wants is going to get the desire going within you. And the desire is the unexpressed possibilities within you seeking expression. The desire is trying to get out of you. The guy with the concrete mold, desire was like giving him an idea. We can instigate and generate amazing life-changing ideas inside of us. And so many people go, oh, I can't do that. That's that's for those other ones on dragons, and that's not for me. If it's coming to you, it's coming to you to be brought to life. Okay, so write them down. It costs you nothing. Write down your list of wants, okay? So everybody, I'm going to leave it that for tonight. A um, couple of weeks from now, I'm going to be doing a masterclass on the 26th of April. So if you're in the Thoughts Become Things group, Comment below, say, who is my success advisor? You should be working with one of my team now. They'll help you to prepare for the masterclass. They're going to get you a workbook and so on and so forth. Today is Tuesday, so it'll be like two weeks from today will be on our second day. Um, comment below, let us know where you are from and, and how you enjoyed this this evening. I'll be doing some more of these. The article is called Yourself by Thomas Troward. If You'll probably find a free PDF online. Yourself by Thomas Troward. I would recommend reading that over and over for like 30 days. You'd be, you'd be amazed what it will do for you. Um, any questions or comments, just pop them below. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Susan.